guys, so this is a continuation from the series this week that we've been doing with the gi. Um, so on your back, please. It's passing half guard. So, you know, we've gone over everything. Passing from half guard top position to back step. Passing from knee cut. Getting rid of the knee shields. Get, uh, having uh, scrambles when the person on bottom is like really good at wrestling and scrambling with the underhook. So, you know, we could kind of review all that stuff. If, if the knee shield is, in the, is, is right in the center, you can walk them back, drop the elbow, right, and start passing. If you already surpass uh, the top leg, then you can really work with that underhook even better, right? Wedge my knee through, able to get my foot out, or pivot and put my hip to pass, right? If, they're, if they have an underhook, I could still pass with that heavy, heavy cross face just like we discussed, boom, right? Um, if they do for whatever reason, as I pass, get that underhook and come up into like a wrestling scramble, I trap the shoulder, could do finish with the arm bar, omoplata, monoplata. If they overpower me and sweep me, he falls right into triangle or omoplata, right? So kind of a recap of everything. We went into details. Today, we're gonna use a similar position when my leg is stuck in between their legs and I can't get it out. So nothing is working at this point, right? So we're in this position, half guard. I'm able to flatten him out and I'm able to underhook. But for whatever reason, option one does not work. He's got a really tight grip. Option two does not work. And I'm not even able to get clear my knee. So a third option, I gotta keep applying the pressure don't fall to my hip. Fall to my hip, there's no pressure on my shoulder to the face. I'm too much on my butt, and he can definitely pivot and reverse and really use that momentum. So I'm gonna go easy on Mike right now, right? But I want that shoulder pressure forward and nice underhook. And now, because I'm not able to pass and he's got a good squeeze on his legs, people think that pushing the legs helps, actually makes it worse for you, better for them. So I'm not gonna push, I'm gonna create a blade with my hand that's on top and I'm going to bring it through his legs and then cup the hamstring and now I'm going to pull see what happens when I pull when he closes his legs as tight as he wants when I pull it actually opens up and now I'm able to get my leg out and use my left leg left hook to keep his hip far away and I'm using my left hook so that way he can't turn back into me now I can check the hip now I can put my head down and walk back. Notice my hip never touches the ground. So now I'm gonna do it on, see here, I'm gonna do it on this side so y'all could see what's going on with my legs. All right, heavy cross face, wedge my knee through. Notice I'm on my right foot, not on my right hip. I can't escape, I can't get out, create a blade, underhook that hamstring and pull. Just a little pull, you don't need to like do a cradle or anything, that'd be great. If you could do a cradle, oh man, you're gonna pass easily. But realistically, it's pretty tough, especially when they're pretty strong. So I just cup the hamstring, pull, get my leg out, and look at my right foot. It hooks and keeps them away. Why? Because if I use the other leg, he can actually shrimp into me and make my ankle float, right, exactly, and push that knee through. But because I have my right leg, if he tries to do the same, all my pressure is on his neck. And this foot is under hook, it's hidden underneath his hip. So he's not able, move this way so they can see, he's not able to do much because of this right here. And of course my hips in the air putting pressure. If I go like this, there's too much space now. Okay, also, if he frames at my neck, I'm fine because I'm looking south. If I start looking up, it's gonna bug me. See how it changes the, the way I sound? Right here I'm good. Also, if he tries to invert, it's very tough because I'm nice and low. Okay, so I'm able to bypass his squeezing of the legs. I'm able to bypass his frame. I'm able to, you know, do really well against his inversion. You know, people invert really annoyingly. They push your, they can like, if, you, if you're not careful and you're up here, he could push me to reverse triangle and then I'm done, right? Like they squeeze, and, you know, but I'm down, I'm back here, very low. So if he tries to invert or whatever, I'm fine. I'm fine. And I can even set him up back up for that position we did the other day where I start trapping that shoulder and really isolating 
his upper body. Also, when I kick my leg out, come back this way. When I kick my leg out, look at how my right foot hooks underneath. So it helps, right? Like it helps that right foot hooks and it helps and it points to keep him away, right? And then from here, I don't stay here because I get triangles. I trap either side of the hip and I walk back, trapping his shoulder and putting that cross face. So it's a continuation of the other techniques. We just layer it now. We put another scenario, more variables, more grips. You try to back step, you try to knee cut, right? It's, nothing's working. Underhook, cup the hamstring, keep the shoulder pressure. Uh, never, when you come out, never fall on your hips. Because now you're giving that opponent that opportunity. I'm up on, above my hips, so all that weight needs to come somewhere. So you put it all on that shoulder and that cross face. Make him look the other way and keep grabbing the back of his gi and pull. If it's no gi, two hands, right? If you cup and it's no gi, you just cup that lat and pull down like this. You kind of hug more because you don't have grips, right? So you gotta like create opportunities to grip. Does that make sense? Um, so we're using this, like this jujitsu cradle, right? A full cradle that I'd be able to close my hands. Very unrealistic in most cases at the higher level. Maybe beginner, you can do it. You can get away with it in the beginning. But as people get better, they're not gonna let you do that. So as they're doing it, they're pinching tight. They have a really tight half guard. They're just stubborn. Create that blade, bring it through, and cup that hamstring. Any questions, guys? Okay, one more time. I'll go back up to this side so you can see the hands. Half guard, underhook. He's doing a good job. My hips come up, my knee comes through. I create a blade. I cup that hamstring and I pull, right? I keep that shoulder pressure onto my opponent. Bring my leg out, point my other leg so he's not able to trap. Check the hip, which means grab the hip and walk back and stay super low, right? I could trap the shoulder. I could bait him with the underhook as well and trap here. I can go to traditional side control or start advancing to north, south, or mount. So it's just another part of the series for this week. We talked about doing this half guard series all week. Okay, and then tomorrow we'll do another scenario. You're not able to get the leg out. It, this is not even working. We'll, we'll get to that point later. But right now, you're gonna have a lot of success by cupping the hamstring. Pull them towards you. Don't pull up, don't pull down. Pull them towards you, and that opens up their legs. Right, because when you close your legs like this and they pull it, you're actually opening up. Sometimes it feels confident to push, easier to squeeze the knees because you want the knees away from each other. All right, let's do it guys. One, two, three.